Hello and welcome back to another unofficial memory upgrade video. Today starring the DS920 Plus and Kingston Sodium Memory. But before we go any further, just like my other videos, and I know it's boring, but let's get the disclaimer out of the way. It's very important for you to know what you're doing here today, if you choose to emulate me on what I'm doing in this video. So, today we're going to be installing unofficially supported memory from Kingston inside our DS920. Now, this is mm, a bit shaky for a number of reasons, notwithstanding um, the fact that Synology themselves say that you should not utilize any memory but their own memory inside their NAS systems. The 920 arrives with four gig of DDR4 memory that's pre-soldered onto the internal boards of this device. Then inside there is a SODIMM upgrade slot that allows you to install an official 4 gig memory module from Synology and upgrade the memory on your 920 to 8 gig, which is great. But their 4 gig module is pretty pricey, it's like 80 or 90 pounds, but they do a lot of testing and they've made sure to select the best possible memory module for your needs. Consequently, if you do use other memory that is not on the compatibility list or unsupported memory list at least of the DS920 Plus, then you are running a configuration that may not perform the way Synology say their solution will. And therefore, because you're running an unsupported setup, you are running an unsupported configuration and therefore they can't really support you technically moving forward. Now, there are ways and means. If you do stay within that gig limit, you may well be okay. And, of course, if you do utilize a Synology NAS, there is an inbuilt memory test facility with Synology Assistant that I'll show you at the end of the video. But, still, nevertheless, if you are going to utilize this device with un unsupported memory, know that you're running a configuration that not only Synology um, don't really support, but also the CPU inside, which has an 8 gig maximum supported memory. So you may run into incompatibility, you may run into inconsistencies. So moving forward from that, make sure you've got layers of protection. Make sure you've got at least two layers of backup in place. So NAS to USB, NAS to NAS, uh, NAS to cloud, something like that. And make sure you've got some redundancy and recovery systems in place, such as background snapshots, or having a good RAID configuration. So in the event that your system either doesn't reboot and bricks itself and you have to rebuild the whole thing from scratch, or it seems to run fine on day one, but throughout its life, suddenly the inconsistencies build up, build up, build up, and then your data falls apart because of a RAID failure, make sure you've got those layers of protection in place as well as running that inbuilt memory test that I'll show you at the end of the video periodically. I'm running this test today, so chances are you won't have to, but it's good to know whether these things work or not. And I know I've used up like three minutes on this disclaimer, so let's get straight into it. So, we've got our 920. Make sure that you've already pre-installed DSM on the base model, so if it's a 4 gig model, set it up with your hard drive, set up your RAID, set up the main configuration with that memory, and once you've done with the default memory, Make sure it's got the latest firmware and then power the device down. Let Give it a few minutes for the hard drives to spin down completely, disconnect the power and then get ready for the installation. Now, I've already got two drives inside here that are uh, already have um, an SHR pre-installed inside. If we move it towards the camera, you can see the sewed in slot inside there and there's two drives inside there in a RAID 1 environment or SHR. What we're going to do today is install a 16 gig model of Kingston memory. Hopefully the model ID is on screen, but don't worry, during the video, I do show you the exact memory that I'm going to be utilizing today on this DDR4 SODIMM. Now, it's worth bearing in mind that I am using 2666 megahertz memory, exactly the same as Synology's own memory in terms of speed and frequency. Although, of course, a 16 gig module is way, way higher than that of the Synology memory that's officially supported inside this device. It's also worth highlighting that the memory prices are significantly lower. You can look at companies like uh, Kingston as well as Samsung, Crucial, Time Tech as well, and an odd little one that we've come across, much more budget line that one. And these memory modules are a lot more affordable, 30 to 40 pounds for eight gig and around 60 to 70 pounds 
for a 16 gig module, which is a tremendous saving. And if you're going to be looking at virtual machines, surveillance, containers, that sort of thing, there's a lot of benefits to be said for having that large amount of memory. It's just the unsupported nature of the configuration we're running today is always going to be a concern. So we've installed that um, 16 gig module inside there. Now I'm just going to pop those bays back in there, even though they're empty. Try and look at it while I'm doing it to make sure I get those trays in correctly. And I'm going to boot this device back up again to see if the Synology is going to see our Kingston memory inside this device. Again, if it works, fantastic. If it doesn't, I'm going to show the results regardless. This is the first time I've ever done this. So it'll be interesting to see if it works. Things we'll be looking for. Can we assign memory in a VM? Is it visible in the resource manager and task manager? Is it recognized and is it actually held? We're going to run a VM and make sure we use a significant enough area of memory to make sure that it's at least then visibly taken by the application and still available to the rest of the system. But once again, and I know you're getting sick of these disclaimers, guys, but make sure you have long-term backup strategies moving forward if you're going to do something like this because you don't know the long-term effects. Let's make our way over to the test area and get this device booted up. Right, so we've logged into DSM on our DS920 Plus, and I'm pleased to say that it has registered. It has booted up into DSM just like it did before the memory upgrade. And I can also see going into the control panel that we can see our 20 gig memory physical. So that's the 4 gig internal and that 16 gig module as well. We can look at some of the options as well. We can go into the resource monitor, have a little look there. And while it does that, I'll also go ahead right now and install the virtual machine management tool because we do want to double check that that memory can be allocated in the most visible way. So let's go ahead and install Synology's virtual machine manager there in the background. And as it does that, we can have a look at the memory utilization. I'm going to leave that to do its thing in the background. Back to the resource monitor. And we can see, again, all the standard stuff. And again, memory is incredibly low there, unsurprisingly, because the memory being of this 920, there's no real apps installed. It's just the base memory plus the 16 gig and little more than that. So we're at the 1% mark there. And while it installs that VM tool there in the background, that should allow us now to pre-allocate some space. It will have to sort out the switch, which is going to create a virtual switch there in the background on the hard, hard drive volume. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and just have a look and see if we can create a base sandbox VM. So no Windows OS on it. We just want to see that we can pre-allocate that level of storage to this VM. And remember, there's other tools as well, such as Docker, that will allow you to um, assign memory to certain areas. And just remember that the memory we're talking about today is this one. It is the Kingston 16 gig module here. Do once again bear in mind that you are doing something that is very much not in uh, on the same page as Synology and indeed Intel and their CPU. You are once again running an unsupported configuration and that means you potentially lose any real support from Synology, both technical and just assistance so you are doing this at your own risk and i know you guys hate these disclaimers but for everyone that does this if they do if they don't know what they're doing you can potentially completely destabilize your storage and i don't want any of you guys to lose your data so now let's go ahead and create um, a vm area here we're going to go for a standard windows vm area stick it on the main storage so have a look three two one and boom there is our 20 gig let's go ahead and assign 12 gig to this test VM, gonna utilize two of the four cores that the 920 features. Uh, we've got to give it some storage. Let's just give it a nice simple 200 gig. We're not gonna worry too much about the guest tool. We're just gonna go ahead and install that VM. Sorry about the noise of an angry seagull there in the background. I, I am still very much by the coast here. So we can go ahead, create this VM, assign it to users and it will start building our vm there in the background and after that we can go ahead and power it on and this will show allocation of that memory here at the bottom it will take that 12 gig that we've just assigned do bear in mind that there is a certain element of memory sharing open to the synology nas system and again 
we can connect to it but this is a blank vm here we've not stuck in a boot disk or an image or anything so you're not really going to see anything too exciting but as you can see we have allocated that memory we have allocated 12 gig of memory on this system which officially supports 8 gig same with that cpu as well we can go into the cpu uh, the cpu monitor and again none of the graphical inconsistencies that we've seen before but as you can see it has pre-allocated that memory we can even go into the task manager and have a little look there and have a look at the different options available and again you can see the virtual machine manager boom has allocated that 12 gig just like we said so it does see this 12 gig but what does this mean long term i can't really confirm that because you'd have to have a device like this on for quite a long length of time if uh, if there were any lasting impacts for those to be seen i would just strongly recommend if you are using a synology nas system make sure you've got the synology assistant tool available head into this option here and there'll be a little tab that you can tap memory test click ok and then from there you can find the nas that you're interacting with right click and you can run a memory test now this can take you know anywhere from minutes to hours depending on the size of your nas uh, the power of your nas and of course the amount of memory you're going to utilize do know that when you do this you will not be able to access your nas for a period of time and it will reboot the system it is worth highlighting that this is a pass fail system it doesn't give you a huge amount of analytical data at the end but nevertheless it still is better than nothing and it gives you something that you should be periodically checking across your memory just to make sure that there isn't going to be any instabilities down the line and once again if you are going to go down this road of unofficial upgrades get your raid and your backups sorted out make sure you've got all the different myriad ways to protect your data an off-site backup raid protection snapshot cloud tools just make sure you've got all those layers in place because there is no point doing a test like this at the expense of your data which quite frankly in almost every sense is priceless thank you so much for watching hope you guys have enjoyed this video do visit the links in the description to the products we talked about today both at nascompares at span.com click like if you've enjoyed it click subscribe to learn more and i'll see you next time